Hello everybody, um, I'd like you to welcome you to uh, a little bit of an experimentation for me. This is, I believe, Doculam, a material used for, as the name sort of implies, laminating documents. I actually got this uh, from the estate of a friend who's passed away now, and it was just in with a pile of other covering material. And I want to see how it handles and if it's for me. Now, this particular mo model is the Poppet, which is a, an old Vic Smead free flight design. And ultimately, I think what I'd like to do is make it into a radio assist, perhaps one channel, even two channels. We'll see. But this will be a very useful sort of platform for me to try out a couple of things. And this is one of them that I want to try with another build. So if it works, I'll stick with it. If it doesn't, it's back to the drawing board. So what I've done is I've, I'm going to treat it as for any other covering. I've cut it slightly oversized. Um, I've set the iron below the temperature that I would normally use for solar foam because I just don't know how this will react. I don't know if it needs a lower temperature, higher temperature. Um, and I'm going to approach it in the same way. So... First thing, the first job, to tack one of the ends. Well, that appears to have tacked it so the lower temperature is all that's required. So the next thing, to put a little bit of tension on and tack the other end. I do believe that... Uh, this doesn't shrink a great deal, so the name of the game is to try and get quite a tight finish in the, at this stage. So I'll tack it in the middle, which is what I'm doing there. And then I'll pull it taut across the middle, tack along the edge. Now I've gone both extremes, across the long, long edge and the narrower edge, and then... What I'm going to do is go between each one to seal it. So back to this end. Pulling it tight. Back to this end. Putting a bit of tension on the long axes. Which I've done there. And then this end. On the long axes again this way. the tension on and then in the middle of the fixing point here and here so in the center here I'm going to try and seal just enough heat to actually glue it down rather than stretch it I don't want to do that yet and then here and then across here now we'll get to the point where it's probably sealed. As much as it needs to be. I'll just go all the way along the edge. Slippery little customer. I might say that there's a shiny side and a dull side. Now, I just assumed this dull side was the side that had the glue on, which, fortunately, that's turned out to be the case. And you'll see that where it begins to pull taut, it becomes totally transparent, and that op opaque appearance just begins to disappear a little bit. So, just want to seal it along the edges. Pull this a little bit. So, that's the first stage done. You can see I've got a little bit further in than I intended, and that's become transparent at that point. Sealed. I think that's now sealed all the way around. So what I'm going to do now, that perhaps isn't there, I've missed that bit. What I'm going to do next 
is trim off the surplus because there's far more than I need here. Actually, it's stretching more than I thought it would. So, oh. experiments revealed one ish issue there, or lack of an issue. It does stretch more than I thought it would. Now, as I'm going to overlap the top onto the bottom, I don't want a great deal showing through here, so I might cut that fairly neat. So I'll run a little blade along the edge here. There you go, and just seal along there, make sure it's down. Yep, that appears to be. Now I'll seal along this edge. Trim off the surplus. There we go. You can tell when I'm concentrating because I stopped talking. Let's pull that round a little bit. I'm actually going to whack the iron up just a little smidgen more. Yeah, it's pulling round. Now I'm going to cut this off because I know what's going to end up happening. This is going to end up sticking to itself. So. Get rid of the excess and bin it so it's not going to stick to anything. And I'm going to pull this round along the edge. Just seal it along the edge here. There you go. Let's cut the excess off. This will work from the same end. There we go. And that's one side covered. And what I think I'll do now, I'll just pause it, the video that is, and I'll prepare the next side, show you that. But there you go. There are no major wrinkles. I've pulled it fairly tight. I'll cover the top before I shrink it because I don't want it to twist the frame. Although it is much stronger now that I've added these diagonal braces. Uh, I'll pause it there, cut the next panel, 
crack on with that and then we'll see how it reacts when a little bit of heat's applied. So here we go, this is the top edge. Same procedure, tuck in the centre, put a little bit of tension on, then to the middle part, perhaps got a little bit more than I intended to do there but never mind. Let's keep the tension this way now. Back to this end. Yeah, back to this end. Yeah. Now we've actually got too much there and it's getting in the way. So I'll cut some off. Might make it easier to handle in the bin, out the way. It seems to go on okay. It's no worse than some coverings I've used. Some have been awful. Uh, no affiliate links here, but I'll tell you now, easy coat's awful stuff. Never use it again, that's for certain. Now, this will be a test. Those wrinkles are quite pronounced there. And we'll see how well they come out. I suspect the temperature of this could go up quite a bit more. But we'll stick with this for now and see how it goes. Seal along this edge. Okay, we're getting there now. So what I'll do, is I'll just pause this and I'll tidy this up and clean it up and then we'll see what happens when actually I shrink the parts in between that it's been tacked on. Let's see what happens. So that's the lower and the upper side covered now. Um, now to try out what happens when I shrink it. And what I'm going to try and do is just do it with the iron rather than with the, the heat gun. I'll just start in the centre and work out and jump around to try and even the stress. Don't know if it's going to be an issue but we'll quickly find out so the trick is obviously the covering becomes less opaque and more transparent as it shrinks you can see the effect there a little bit in the corner I'll do this end And I'm trying to use the light from the window to give me an indication of where the creases are. And I think what's happening is there's a certain 
degree of tensioning as it cools as well. Do this one. Just check that. Twist coming in? Oh, I don't think so. It's hard to tell. It's something I'll have to watch. I'll do the middle one on here. Yeah, that's okay. No, this is a an end that I think may be troublesome because this appears to be quite a lot in terms of creases. And I'm going to actually try the gun on this to see what I can stand firstly and does it blow out. So here we go. It always helps if you plug these things in. It's quite brutal this, so we'll see. It's come. It has actually come out with that, so perhaps the iron isn't hot enough. Um, do I press on with the gun? Do you know I'm going to try it? See what happens. Start from the centre. Well, the centre's done. And that, that's it done. I'm quite pleased with that. Very impressive. And the possibilities now for covering it in a, a sort of an authentic covering, such as Jap tissue. If you can get your hands on Jap tissue now, I'd very much doubt it. Um, yeah. Press for that, does the job. Quite like the transparent look. Would I be able to see that on the flying field? One wonders, I don't know, I'm not convinced. Perhaps a bit of colour along the leading edge and leave the rest clear. We'll see. Yeah, pleased with that. Thanks for watching. Hope that's been informative to you. It's been quite informative to myself in terms of trying it out. I've always wanted to try it. Haven't watched uh, Mark Robinson use it on his vintage models. He goes on to then cover it in tissue and then use a polyurethane varnish to hold the tissue down. Um, I may do the same. I may experiment with something different. We'll see. But I like that. Thanks for watching. By way of a postscript, I've just realised I think I should have affixed each rib and that would actually control the shrinkage, although it's settled down really nicely now. But on the next panel, I'll actually iron on. It seems to be working here just the same, however. I'll iron on each rib and then heat each panel in a sort of random pattern to even out the shrinkage. So perhaps next time, Tack, tack, tack all the way around, then tack in the centre. 
obviously you'll have to do that if it's an under cambered rib uh, because these aren't I didn't even give it a thought to be honest with you but there you go that's my experience of using this warts and all not many warts apart from my silly mistake there I think but I'm looking there and that's held true no warpage in it thanks for watching once again